What up, YouTube? It's your boy Deuce Beats coming at you live from the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And I got my brother with me, Marley Marl in the building. What up, Mar? Deuce, what's up, bro? Let's do it. Man, let's do it. Hey, check this out. Who we got on the podcast today? Hey, you know what's funny about this shit, bro? This dude was rocking Adidas at Nevada with me when we first got there. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, hey, for real, for real, bro. I'm talking about you used to spat your cleats so you don't have to show the ugly ass boats. But <laughs> hey, real talk. This big homie Marco. Shout out to the big homie. What's up with it, Marco? What up, Marco? Yo, 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 what up, fellas? What's up, dudes? What up, Marlon? Yeah, man. How Thanks you feeling over there? Podcast, bro. That's what's up, bro. We appreciate bro, I'm feeling you. Good, man. Can't complain at all. That's what's up, man. Oh, man hey. Thank y'all, man. Look, it's just a blessing to be with you guys. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, Marco, bro. You know we got some controversy right now, but before we jump all into this, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's some heated things going on right now. But uh, tell us about you, man. Tell, I mean, I know you. Some, you know, people from Nevada know you. Whoever may not know you, we just want you to just, you know, give a brief, a brief background of what you did and, you know... <laughs> I bet. Um, again, once again, I appreciate you, fellas. Um, again, like you said, I'm Marco, fresh out of 205. And for those of y'all who don't know that, that is Alabama. Hey. Um, <laughs> went from Alabama. Went from Alabama to Arizona for one year. Had to go to Juco, Ju Juco route. Um, again, went Juco one year. I'm on up there to Nevada um, after that. Again, you know, um, Again, stamp my name in history. You know, one of the greatest receivers to ever step foot in that building, step foot on that field, and even bless that university uh, with my talent. And then um, after I was done with that, man, you know, again, had me a couple stints in um, playing pro ball where I went to the league and not only went from lead, went to go and play a little uh, Canadian football as well, too. So That's what's up. Yeah, man. So, I mean, you you played in the league. You you had a, a hell of a career at Nevada, man. But transitioning, you know, from college to pro, how was that for you, bro? The thing about it, you know, when you go to a shitty team or a shitty organization, you know, they have a lot of dysfunction going on. And then that's when everybody starts pointing the fingers and blaming everybody else for everything that it is that is going on. So then after I left there, you know, I went to a dysfunctional organization um, again extremely appreciative and extremely grateful um, to be being part of the, um, of the Washington Redskins. I mean, the Washington Commanders now uh, being part of that organization. And then after that, you know, did a little stint in um, Detroit with the Detroit Lions. Um, right. But, you know, the biggest thing or the transition that goes into that whole little thing is, man, that, you know, one thing they don't tell you about, they don't tell you about the politics side of it. Right. You know, um, you know, everybody thinks that it's, all about catching ball, making plays, you know, if you can play or you can't play. But, you know, a lot of times that, you know, you get into the numbers and get into the financial situations that a lot of teams be backed in the corner and they and their hands be tied. But guess what? Somebody got to somebody got to put their head on the chopping block. Right, right. And, you know, it's crazy because, like, real talk, man, um, I, I've heard that on a podcast, right, dudes? We heard this on a podcast already. Yeah. I know cats that personally that tells me about it. You know, I even had my little uh, experience myself. You know, they just bring you in a camp. You just a body. And then all of a sudden they like, oh, yeah, we got this person. But all in all, bro. I just think that the politics is a big thing and some of these younger cats, and I know you have a son right now, they don't understand how that situation is. They like, they see football, they see, you know, money and the fame and things like that. I mean, what is, what is your advice or what can you do if you were to go back in time to position yourself to make yourself a better person, right? Or a better player or what difference can you make? Man, I would definitely say, um, 
and I, I become I become more of the student of the game. You know, um, the biggest thing why I tell a lot of kids, and you know, not only other kids but also my son as well too, is that you know, um, again, I didn't I didn't ask a lot of questions. Um, again, I felt that I wasn't really taught and pr- fully prepared on how to actually play the position, actually play the game. And, you know, like I tell people all the time that you know, I only started playing I only started playing football. Um, what ninth to tenth grade year of high school, so crazy. you know, um, crazy. so that was my first, that, that was that was my experience. So you know, like I tell them, like you know, I never played Pop Warner. You know, I never played you know what we call now flag seven on seven. You know, I guess my definition of Pop Warner flag on flag is like again, like you said, I grew up in the country that um, <laughs> me and my homeboys, me and my homeboys, bro. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, bro. It's a flag on flag. I mean, me and my homeboys, oh, we, we were those. Hey, um, hey, we was our pastor playing picking up bus, and then, like, whoever pick up the ball, you getting smacked. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's how that's how I learned how to play the game. Hey, hey, but on the West Coast, that's called oh, throw know. up tackle, bro. On the West Coast, bro, it's throw up tackle, throw up tackle. All right, we ain't gonna talk about Alabama mm-hmm. shit right now, bro. Because if you want to talk Alabama shit, bro, I'm gonna bring up y'all getting your ass whooped last year to um, a Big Ten school. So if you want to keep talking Alabama, this Alabama, that I'm gonna take it personal, bro. I'm gonna take it personal. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, because. <laughs> The last time that the last time that, that a California, matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna keep Northern California out of this. A Southern California team did something. I say USC did have a fairly decent season a year ago, a, a but then they got decent. smacked. By, but they got they got smacked by Tulane, bro. Yeah, they got smacked by Tulane, bro. Marco, you acting like so the ball games are relevant. Oh. Bowl games are not relevant. Every player sits out now for a bowl game, bro. so it's not it's not the same. All okay, the players okay, are not playing. Okay. So if you want to hey, say, hey, you hey, know, hey. a bowl game that didn't matter to dudes who making millions of dollars and they like, oh, I'd rather just sit out, you know, not injure myself and debate on if I'm going to the league, you can't throw that out there. But I could say Alabama Decato, brought their A game. Did Cato play? Nope. Did Cato William play? Huh? Nah, <laughs> nah, man. Hey, yes, he did. Every, he, all right, look. I don't know who all played I'm, I'm that game. About, I'm talking about last year when they went to the New Year's Eve Bowl when they played here in Texas. Yes, Caleb Williams played. They played oh, against yeah, Tulane. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they got they, smacked. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But the whole they team didn't destroyed. play. No, the whole team didn't play. Yes, they though. did. And on top of that, they Michael, all got destroyed. Hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay, bro. Michigan destroyed Alabama. They, they they couldn't even do nothing against Michigan. All that he right, he, but you know what's so funny about this, Deuce? I'm gonna tell you what's funny about this. I don't never see cats from Alabama really repping Alabama. Like you know, LA cats they didn't shift it from SC to all over. Now you see cats. The, who was the starting quarterback for Alabama? Bryce Young. Who was the number one overall pick? Bryce Young. What school did he go to? What school, Marco? Alabama. You quiet right now? <laughs> Alabama. Alabama. Where are you from? Alabama. What, what high school did he go to? Yeah, hey, 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 Deuce. Uh-huh. Hey, Deuce. Ask him why. Ask him why Bryce Young wanted to pack up his bag and go across the to the country instead of staying in Southern California, where they say the weather is always beautiful. We got the best. We got the best weather in the world. Why he leave home? <laughs> hey, man. Why he leave it, home, it, bro? You know they gave him that money, bro. It was all about the money. It's all about the money. It's all recruiting. Y'all got, more, y'all got more money than us, bro. He wasn't getting the. Y'all got more money than he us. He wasn't getting the bag like that, bro. He wasn't getting the bag like they that. Do. As you can see, you can see he's stumbling now. That just means he lying. He just trying to find some <laughs> to justify the bullshit that's going on. He trying to find some, bro. Hey, it, 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 bro, it is. It hey, is. No, no, Alabama. Hey, one thing I would say about Alabama, bro, is that. They got that old money, like that old South, you know, slave plantation money. These niggas know how to raise a nigga, bro. And they know how to get him to go to Alabama, too. So, like, <laughs> you going to tell me that he had the same opportunity at, and on West Coast and then he had at Alabama? Nah, let's keep it 100. So, like, I mean, Alabama, they got SEC. They got 
the uh the the big contract over there the tv contract so of course the money was flowing in he got a better deal it worked out for him hey shout hey. out to him bro shout out to him so you just so you finna sit here and act like ain't no money in la we finna talk we finna act like ain't no money in la hey, bro it's, we talking it's about money. la here bro it's money we ain't it's, talking it's, about it's... reno we ain't talking about sparks <laughs> Bro, we talking about LA, bro. What we, what we bro, talking about, bro? LA got it's money, not even bro. But it has, and I'm from, I'm from Alabama. But, they ain't even comparable, bro. Bro, you can spread the money throughout LA, bro. That's what I'm trying to say. You go to Alabama, you coming from the West Coast to Alabama. Oh my God, hey. he's a star. He's this. We're going to we gonna give him everything we have you know to what, give you him. You know what Bryce Young Alabama. saw, bro? Bryce Young, bro, Bryce Young saw. Bryce Young saw that he wanted to go somewhere where they play real football at with some dogs. That's it. With some dogs? I mean, do you, not, do, do you not see the products that come out of SC in the league? Countless years? Every year, first rounder? Like, I mean, just because Alabama Ooh. started to build a tradition Ooh. in 2010, Ooh. 2010 moving forward, well, let's talk about all Ooh. the years, not just 2010 to 2024. Let's talk about all these years. Which we don't have okay, a number one overall pick. Hold on, let's do this. Huh? Hold on, let's do this. You can knock out. You can knock. You can knock all the. You can knock all the championships out that that um that 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 coach Nick Saban got there. Guess what? Alabama still got more national <laughs> championships than USC, bro. What are we talking about? No, no, <laughs> no, Marco. You, I we gonna have about? to fact check that because I know that's a lie. That's a lie because SC I mean, before I mean, Nick Saban got. I mean, how many I mean, national I mean, I mean, championship? How I many national championship? Um, Alabama won. I'm better yet. How many? How many championships? Nick Saban. Won? All I can. Nick Saban got what five now? It's five, right? So, so Nick Saban. He got so five. Nick Saban right? got five. Nick Saban got five. Alabama got a grand total of, I think they got either 17 or maybe they got 19. So you do the math, bro. Oh, oh, I don't know about the, the 20s and the 30s and all of that when they wasn't even playing football back then. They was, I don't know what the oh, hell that man. shit was. Leather helmets, a pig skin. Bro, all I know is from my era when I was looking at football, not when I was playing college football, when I was looking at football, SC dominated. Always top picks, Heisman candidates, this, this, and that. We know what was going right, so on, the, bro. Y'all. I just, I just fact checked it. Alabama got eighteen. Okay, they got eighteen. Right. So that means that. What about so SC though? Hold on. If, if Coach, no, no. Coach Saban, you, you fact checked this Saban, one. If Coach Saban won five, Alabama had thirteen national championship before he even won his first one. Oh, hold on, exactly he, he hold got. on, hold on. Okay. USC has seven. SC got like three, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? This nigga Marco be lying. He be lying. What? He be lying. What SC got about? 17 natties, bro. You said SC got four, bro. SC got 17 natties, bro. 17, I said, bro. I said and they who had, had the one most. taken away from him. They got one taken oh. away from him because of Reggie, right? So look, man, we ain't gonna be doing fact check, fact check, nigga. Fuck Alabama, bro. Them, them <laughs> south, them coon eating ass boys out there, man, chasing rabbits and chickens. Them niggas ain't out here where the sand is where you get your work in and shit. They over there. <laughs> <laughs> they over there trying to survive. They try to survive right now, man. Hey, Yo, let me ask you this. What? What hey Marco, let me ask you this, yeah, bro. So you try, you, you rather you rather be in Alabama or Cali? Just simple Ooh. question. Simple question. Alabama, easy. Alabama, oh easy. God. This boy is sick. This <laughs> boy is sick. <laughs> he's, he's sick, bro. Easy. I've been to Alabama. Easy. It ain't nothing out there, bro. Hey, the best thing in Alabama is that you go two hours away, two, three hours away, you can get to Atlanta, bro. You go to uh, Birmingham, Crawford, uh, shit, I don't even know, man. It's so boring out there. It's like, nigga, it's nothing there. It is nothing. I'm telling you, bro, if you go to Alabama, it is nothing but grass and brick homes. (laughs) Niggas be fishing on a weekend. That's what they do on the weekends. They go fishing. They don't do nothing fun. I mean, it might be fun to them, but... I don't know, bro. That shit is different for me. I ain't motherfucking mosquitoes be the size of your hand, bro. 
<laughs> they be huge. <laughs> hey, Deuce. Yeah. Hey, Deuce. Yeah. Do me, me a favor. Uh huh. Ask ask him since he's from since he's so much from LA. Uh huh. Ask him why did he had to go to school? Or ask him why he had to go to school in the valley. <laughs> ask him why he had to take his ass to the valley and go to school. Ask him that, know. please. I don't know what he talking about. Hey, I don't know what the what hell he talking to? about. What high school you went bro, to? Bro is what wild. He said went to school to the valley, bro. Bro, you what better high school me. you went to, bro. I did not go. Bro, I went bro. to Inglewood, bro. I went to Inglewood. Do you know where Inglewood yeah. is? Do you know yeah, where Inglewood is? Have you been yeah, there? Okay, yeah, do you know what middle school I went to? I went to Henry Clay. Do you know where that is? Mm-hmm. Nigga, none of that oh, shit is in the valley, valley bro. That's right there okay. on 120th and 122nd in oh, North. So you, gra- so you graduated from Inglewood. Inglewood? I graduated from Inglewood, bro. What do you mean, bro? I never. Okay. Okay. You must. Yeah, you must got me fucked up, bro. Because every nigga from LA knows I'm from LA. I'm from LA, LA, nigga. It, it ain't no is okay. buts or anything about it, bro. I, I'm from Los Angeles, bro. Never, okay. hey, never come right. Well, I mean, you know, Long Beach. Hey, you probably right. I just probably got you confused because y'all leave LA and go to the valley so y'all can go to school. So I, no. I, I'm just confused. So that's, that's all. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's, that's a new generation. That's a new generation because they get. I, I can't knock these players getting hey, started. Just, they getting money to go to a uh, bro. They moving people families right now to go to schools in the valley. Like shit, I was fucking hearing the stories from my boy TB. Like shit, the type of money they got in the valley. Yo, dad, yo, what? These girls be man. They paying everything. You get in a brand new car in high school just because you go to school in the valley. Shit, who wouldn't take that? Who wouldn't take that? I'm just saying. That wow. shit wasn't the. I mean, when I was in school, it was Dominguez, Long Beach, uh, Poly, all of these schools, inner city schools. They we was we was running it. Then you had Notre Dame and the Valley. They was good, but then all of a sudden, over the years, because you know now all the like St. John Bosco, modern day, like that shit was not relevant back in the day, bro. Right. When I was I in school, I, I you, 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 know, you know, Trey, bro, I, we was. Right. We, Bro, it wasn't like that, but you talking about decades after our time, bro. We ain't it's a different game. Shit, shit's evolving, bro. It's you know what I I will say though? I will say this, bro. Money rules sports now, bro. I look at it like this, man. You want to play on the AAU team, you gotta pay thousands of dollars right. to be on a good team. If you want to play for the inner city team, <laughs> ain't none of them kids that's good on them teams. They got a free scholarship on a <laughs> right. on a nice team in the valley or something. It's the same process in high school football, seven on seven. All of that shit is the same. They didn't they didn't water it down, bro. They watered it yeah. down. Right. So. Okay, so yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree. I, I agree with you on that. Okay, yeah, I mean that's a hey, that's a miracle. Can I get a a, a clap for that? And this nigga <laughs> agreed with me, bro. He agreed with me, bro. That's what's up, though. Y'all y'all can agree on something, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, we would never agree on shit, though. Not nah, nah, hell no, nah. fuck that. Me and Marco, <laughs> this dude, hey, hey, you know it's funny though, man. I have a love hate relationship with this dude, bro. Cause like one of the things I would tell you, bro, is me and Marco, like I said, when we first got on the podcast, we when I got to Nevada, we was wearing Adidas, bro. This shit was ugly, bro. I couldn't <laughs> even believe that I've never seen no trash ass shit like this. They told me we was wearing Nike when I got there, bro. It was big ass space boats, like with the three stripes, bro. The Reggie Bushes. Oh, the Reggie Bushes. Bushes. <laughs> they, they ugly, bro. Yeah. But you know what's funny, bro? Hey, this dude was like the only dude who was talking back to the coaches, like, this shit weak. This oh, shit weak. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, they used to say we can't spat our cleats and shit. Like, I, I can't be seen rocking these, bro. I, I never own a pair of these. So how could I be seen? You know, Marco had a little lip toy, and I was like, damn, bro. I can fuck with a nigga who got some balls to talk back to CA, you know. Ain't nobody Ooh. did that shit. He was talking back Marco to CA? Like he was, bro. He was he was, <laughs> he was wilding back then. But, I, I mean, shit, Marco, you got a reason why, bro? And no, bro, I'm just always and I always tell what I always just try to tell them is that, you know, again, even with Coach Alt, like his biggest problem was like I always was explaining to him, like, like it was a military mindset, but 
they didn't understand that, you know, we all come from different walks of life. Uh, you know, we have been through so much different stuff in our life. It's like, like we come here and, you know, we put out and we continue to put our life on the line for you. It's like the least that we can do is just enjoy and kind of have fun by competing right. um, and having, you know, and, and, and then cold. We didn't have, bro, we didn't have an indoor. So once it snowed, we outside in the snow. Oh yeah, with with the tra- oh yeah, the niggas used we didn't, to get we the didn't tractors. Have, <laughs> yes, we didn't have nothing, bro. So it's like, like it's already we're, we're the road. We're, we're young. We like, like mm-hmm. we don't want to go through this. So it's like, okay, when we're trying to have fun, like they don't want us to have fun. They don't want us right. to laugh. They didn't want us to like to make jokes and and you know again just uplift ourselves and just to make sure that we can go in here and have a great practice. <clears throat> and that was one of the biggest things that I always had a problem with because yeah. like me I'm one of those people that you know if I'm not enjoying it if I'm not having fun with it then you're not going to get the best out of me like I'm, I'm contemplating on okay how quickly can we get this with and how, mm-hmm. how quickly can I get my ass up out of here and go back home because I'm cold yeah. as fuck <laughs> yeah nah for real that's for real yeah like, like it was, I don't get wrong. Hey, I remember one time though, um, and when I was saying it like that, like, like yeah, I used to do like little, look, I used to do like crazy shit though. But that was just me. Like, um, like I said, bro, it was cold, it was snowing, it was freezing out there. Hey, we had these big ass, we had these big ass um snow gloves. They gave us these big ass snow gloves. I was like, yeah. man. Fuck that, nigga. I'm finna go out this bitch and eat snow gloves. I'm finna catch these bitches. I'm finna act a fool. So, <laughs> mind you not, like, again, I, I come out, I got on big ass snow gloves. Like, nigga, I'm running route. <laughs> Give me that shit. Huh. Now, if I were dropping them, okay, get mad, make a big deal. Right. Bro, I'm out there nagging them bitches. Huh. Give me that. Give me that. This nigga get mad and yelling and screaming at us like, take those goddamn gloves off and this and that. I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> then we get, he get mad at me and didn't even make me take off my gloves. Oh, man. Like, it's, just like, it's, it's, it's little stuff like that that was just like, yeah. that they would just fuck up the move on, on everything. And they're just like, man, what are we doing right now? Hey, hey, Marco, you remember a picture that he used to make everybody shut <laughs> He used Bro. to make you say, hey. <laughs> "For real? Hey. Hold on, wait, 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 Bro, wait, 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 wait. You, you see this? You see this? Yeah. No, nigga, you can't have it. This is gone. He made Bro, y'all. Still, uh, wait, hold on. He Bro, made y'all dude. clean shave y'all shit. Bro, dude. we was military. <laughs> Bro, hey, 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 hold on, hey, wait. The first day I told him, uh, listen, the first day I told him, nigga, you got me fucked up was, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we was in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, oh, okay, you know, I got cuts and stuff. So, you know, again, I, I shave my shit down. Like, yeah. you know, I, you know, me, I'm already getting mad because, nigga, my shit finally started to grow, nigga. I yeah. got, <laughs> my shit finally started to grow. Yeah, finally grow. Like, he's 21 like, years he... old. He got some chin hair now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, like, nigga gonna come to me. Yeah. Nigga said, well, hey, uh, hey, Marco, coach said you need to shave. You gotta, you gotta cut those shit. Hey, that sound like that. Coach B. Coach B did that to you? <laughs> <laughs> Cause he was. <laughs> hey, hey, that nigga said. Hey, that nigga said. He said. He said. He said. He said. Hey, Marco, you got a young coach said you got to cut that. I said, cut what? He said, this right here, you got to cut that. I said, bro, I got like four strings right here. What are you talking about? So he was like, well, well, coach said you got to cut. I said, well, bro, I ain't got no clippers. And he said, well, he said, okay, then. So I started asking anybody that have clippers. Nobody had clippers. Bro. bro, who carried Clippers to the bowl game? <laughs> bro, this man doing lunch. Like when we eating the freaking, this man walk up to me, bro, with a razor and said, Here you go. I said, I said, nigga, you got me fucked up. I ain't let y'all. Go. I said, nigga, I ain't I said, nigga, I ain't gonna put no razor to my motherfucking face, nigga, and fuck up my face. Y'all niggas crazy. <laughs> I 
Look, look, bro. I won't, listen, I won't play. Y'all see me home and do whatever y'all gonna do. But I ain't putting no razor to my motherfucking face, bro. Y'all yeah. tripping. You said the razor, boy. He said, get, go get the cream and yeah. start shaving it. <laughs> that's bro. messed up. That's, that's messed up. Oh, bro, I, shit. I, 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 I ain't going to lie. I told him. I've been, tell, been telling the boys. I said, shit, boy, if we would have had a transfer reporter back when we was in school, nigga, the first day I stepped on, step on campus at Nevada, nigga, I was out. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was a different animal, bro. It was so crazy, no, no. boy. That shit used to be funny, boy. Hey, yeah. hey, Deuce, uh-huh. it's time to get into story time. Story bro. time. All right, it's story time. <laughs> <laughs> story time. Hey, hey, hey. So look, man. Back then, bro. Uh, shit, we had some dudes from L.A. Rome. Uh, Uche was from the Valley. Yeah. He, he was not from L.A. He went to Crespi, but he was my guy, man. And uh, man, uh, you know, back then, you know, Uche, Janal, Marco, they, bro, they had the house, bro. That was the house, bro. <laughs> and I know Marco gonna, uh, he gonna, he gonna probably laugh about this, yeah. boy. But man, dog. They they put me on something called a mission, boy. I came over, man. Man, Marco told me slide in the room. I didn't know what was going on at the time, bro. I'm I'm a young pup, bro. Yeah. I'm so young. I'm like, what the hell is going on right there, man? Just know it was a, a female here and a female there, boy. Ooh. They had some pizza. They was laughing at me. They like, Marlon, go enjoy yourself. Go enjoy yourself. Man, I couldn't even get him up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what is this? <laughs> I said, are these dudes playing a prank on me, bro? I said, hey, man, this is comedy. They over here trying to film me and laugh. <laughs> Boy, hey, man, Marco, bro, what happened, bro? What you, you just set me up on the first the first uh, UNR uh, trip or what, man? What was that, bro? Nah, bro, hey, I was, <laughs> hey, I was, just, I was just trying to introduce you to college. Like, bro, that's it. <laughs> like, it was... <laughs> Hey, what um hey Deuce, you remember um you remember the you remember the movie He Got Game? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. You know, when, 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 when Jesus walked into his room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, it was some comedy ties, bro. <laughs> Hey, man, all I'm going to say is, bro, man, I didn't disappoint any other time, but that shit had me rolling, man. Crazy. Oh, shit, bro. Oh, man. Hey, nah, we got to get in some other stuff right now. We got to talk about some other stuff. This go, this go, <laughs> we got stories, like, but we ain't going to talk about that right there. All right, so look, dude, should I uh, tell him? Should ahead, I tell yeah. him yeah, about yeah. the le- Okay, so look, we had Rashad on here, bro. Rashad Matthews was on here, and we, we was just going to end the show. We was just like, all right, you know, wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? Rashad came on here and he said that, and this is him. I'm quoting him because we going to have, you have your conversation now. But Rashad said this, you know, Nate Burleson was up here. Then it's him. Then Marco Mitchell and all them other dudes is down here. I was like, oh. Oh shit! I was like, "Shots, we got some controversy and shit like that." I was like, "Oh shit!" And I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna get Mark on here." I say, "I'm gonna uh, the next uh, epi- episode. We gonna have you out here." So I just want to know, man, top five receivers, where you at with it? Uh, and this is Nevada, of course, you know. Yeah. And you know, talk your talk right now. Platform yours. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when when you talk about. When you talk about the top receivers, I mean, of course, I mean, you have no choice but to put in, the, um, again, the Alex Van Dyke, you know, the Nate Burleson, the Travis Ensley. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, you have all these different great guys, but everybody, each, each receiver was actually great in their own way. And also, everybody came in a different time. You know, those guys were part of uh, what was called the Airwolf. I mean, they threw the ball. They do the ball at least 70 to 80 percent of the 80 percent of the game. So, you know, and also to it that, you know, again, no discredit. It was D1 double A. It was a big sky. Mm-hmm. So, yep. so, you know, it, it's, you know, again, you can't you can't take credit for that. 
Um, again, like once I look at it and I talk about um, when you talk about the greatest, some of the greatest receivers that were that were there. You know, I give I give everybody their just dues. Um, but at the same time, is that um, I think I could have done what they done, what they did, but I don't think they could have done what I did. Mm, okay, wait, wait. Okay. Can you? Re- I just want you to say that again. So you saying you could have did what they did? That was easy, right? But could they yeah. have done what you did? Okay, all right. Yeah. I just want to clarify. It. Okay. No, they couldn't. I, and, and the reason why, and, and the reason what I mean by what I've said that, if you look at everybody that 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 again, everybody can go on a list and they can say, okay, this top, this is this is my top ten receivers to ever come through um, Nevada. Um, and, and you look at their whole production and look at their numbers, then you look at my numbers. Every receiver, every receiver who will be rate, rated ahead of me, they have at least over 100 some catches more than me. Now, again, if Rashad feel that he's the second best receiver to ever come through Nevada, that's great. I, I, can't, I can't knock that, but at the same time, it's like, Okay, what are we basing this on? I mean, either either way it goes, you know, everything that we talk about is subjective. Right. You know, that, um, yeah. you know, again, like I said, mm-hmm. like each one of those guys, they had at least close to a hundred some catches. Again, Rashad had 91 catches one year. Nate Burson, you know, he had the um the all-time record. He had a hundred and thirty catches in one season. Um Travis Ensley, you know, Damn, he, he had, had 130. Yeah, like one thirty. It was one thirty. I didn't know. I knew it was over a hundred, but one thirty. Yeah, it was like, it was like one. It was like one twenty or something. Like he he broke the yeah. he broke the record, and you know somebody else came back and eventually broke it as well too. You know, hell, one game. I think one game he had eighteen catches in one game. Oh. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah. like again, if we're if we're talking about him, and what also too is that when I talk about what they did, you know, again, like I said, they had ninety some catches. My my I I haven't had one year what I had over sixty five catches, not one year. Yeah, did you still put up a rack? I put up over eleven hundred yards, ten touchdowns. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> bro, I played I played with three thousand. I played. Listen, bro, Deuce, I had three thousand yards rushers, three, not one, not two, but three. Crazy. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Vital yeah. and Luke Lippincott. Yeah, that was a record. I remember that shit. That shit and was Luke crazy. Lippincott. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is that what they did, what, what they did, it was great. It was one again. I took I took my hat off to everybody. But the problem is that I have with people when they start talking about what's the great and what's not the great is that guess what? It probably be a. I don't even know when it's gonna happen again. It probably won't even happen until a long time. I probably won't even. I probably be old and I probably be old before somebody break my record at um at Nevada. Where it is that where where the record is yardage at the catch. Where I got where I averaged a whole entire season where I had fifty three catches the whole entire year for over eleven hundred yards and twenty one twenty one point eight yards a catch. Mm. He sw- he putting up those Randy Moss numbers now. Now uh, we gonna have to have you on a little one on one with Rashad because I feel like you got some some shit to say. You know what I'm saying? No, no, but I, like I, I said, and and again, I respect and again, I love I love Rashad game. Yeah. I mean, again, the way that they use him and they got the ball to him, like I wasn't put in that same position. I wasn't put in that same situation. They got they ran. They ran bubble screens. They ran um, tunnel screens. Them boys, they ran um, post routes, goal routes, you know, different type of routes, but I didn't have that same option. So what I did with what I had to do with with less than what, like I said, I averaged, I, I averaged four catches a game. My Damn, whole, and let's, let's look at it, my whole entire career. I'm looking at my whole career from from my first one in Nevada all the way to the end. I averaged five catches a game. Think about that. I averaged five catches a game. And I blew everybody out of the wind. Can't argue that. 
So, so, so that's so, so again, so that's why I tell people when they when they again when they when they when they do the rating, and again, even when they when we talk about it when uh when Nevada the people do the ratings as well too. It's like I tell them, like, what do y'all justify? What do y'all base this on? Right. Yeah. I said the yeah. thing is that if if this person had 70 catches one year and they only had and they only had 800 yards, this person had 80 catches and they only had 900 yards, and another year they had 90 catches and they barely had a th- and they had a thousand yards. Man, Marco, since when you became a statistician, bro? You know, oh, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, this nigga over here, hey, I had this many catches and this. He's breaking many, it down, huh? <laughs> He's breaking it well, down, like. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you know when, like I said, once you start to kind of like when you start to look at things, and then yeah. you kind of put things in perspective, man. And you know, again, like I said, like when you look at everybody numbers and and you try to put everybody in these different type of categories, like. Again, I think that we all were – I think every receiver that came to Nevada was unique within themselves. The only right. difference is that – and the only difference is that, you know, again, you know, they got the opportunity to – and there's no knock on them is that they were put in a position to, to, to move around and do different things where it is that I didn't have that same op- opportunity, but I made do with what it is that I did have. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, so are we gonna get a top five or what, bro? Are you scared to give us a top oh, five? Or are you gonna oh, say, top, you know what, I'm gonna pass off? <laughs> no, I mean, again, like, like I say, man, my top five is my top five is realistic. So, Ooh, again, okay. my, and the sad and the sad part about it is that my top five will go is I'm going Alex Van Dyke one, Nate B two. Travis Insley three. Oof. Um, that's him. He want to put himself next. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I never. I never. I, I. I don't. I never put myself. Um, and I never put myself. Um, third. It was always one receiver that I. That I. That I. Uh, that I said was that was um, that I always put because again I'm going off a stat guy because he's also one of the guys that set the NCAA record. Um, mm. But I cannot think of his name right now. All right, we gonna uh, skip him. Who who number oh, yeah. five then? Oh, I'm five easily. <laughs> I told I'm you. Five. <laughs> I, I knew Marco was gonna say I'm five, bro. It would be like five, said, five without Marco and, saying he's top five. And the reason why, and the reason why I'm sitting up here putting myself as five is that again, yeah, everybody. Like, again, like I said, I can put everybody up there, and you know, everybody will have. Let's say we got, let's put all our, all our stats up there. So we're looking at all our stats. Um, some people will have a better, a better number than me. So that means that their number may be better than mine just a little bit. That right. means they will have over a hundred some catches more than me. Their yardage will probably be no more than 500 or 600 yards, more than what it is that I already have. And then yardage at the catch, of course, I'm number one. I'm, a, I'm first in that one. And then we mm-hmm. look at the touchdowns. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to be topping that. And on top of that, Deuce, here we go with this. Mm-hmm. They didn't throw me fade balls. I didn't get fade balls in the red zone. Oh damn! So you doing this all off of all yes. of besides fades? I got, I got two fade balls. I got two fade balls thrown to me since I um my whole entire career at the University of Nevada, bro, in the That's red zone. Crazy. Are you exaggerating, Marco? Because you know no. I gotta check these, man. We go got we got fact check these, bro. Because you bro, said you can ask all these, hey, all you, these you, you can fact check anything, <laughs> and you can ask anybody. Like we they, we did not throw me fade balls in the red zone. No, right. I will say this though, Deuce. I'll say this. One thing he is not lying about was the three one thousand yard rushing, and how Coach All used to be like, "Well, fuck it, fourth and one, run it up the ass." Pause. Pause. <laughs> Oh, that's it. But that's exactly what you were saying. <laughs> I was right there. I was like, right oh, shit. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that's and that's the game. But like you yeah. said, you know, you can't you can't you can't uh, you can't dictate and you can't predict what it is that's going on. You know, even like my first my first year of you know with Nevada even recruited me. Yeah. You know, um Nietzsche and Flowers. You know, Nietzsche and Flowers were there before I got there. It was his senior year, you know. Nietzsche Fowler had 91 catches that year. Damn. And you know, me coming to junior college, 
you know, um, I finished my junior college career um, one season. I think I had um, I had 34 catches. I had 34 catches, 726 yards, eight touchdowns, and I think I had like 27 yards per catch. You know, mm-hmm. and they told me they were like they were cool. They were cool. The to me was, shit, you gonna have 24 catches in two games, shit. I would tell anybody and I would say it like this is that bro if I had 91 catches I would have put over 2,000 yards up two bands I would have put up 2,000 yards Easily. I don't know. I don't know about that. Two racks, Marco. You kind of stretching it, bro. You stretching it, bro. Two racks, okay. nigga. Oh, on yeah, ninety, okay. go, go. on ninety catches, bro. That's yeah. not. That's not two thousand yards. You know how much you got to average a catch yards a catch on ninety catches, bro, to get two racks, bro. Do the math. Do you know? Just, I, do you know? Do you know what I average? What you average? Because I'm gonna tell you mm-hmm. right now if that's enough. I average twenty one yards a pop. Twenty one yards a pop on how many catches? 53. Yeah. So, so, so not, not double that. Not double so, that. So, you tell me that means you have to get over 100 catches, bro. You got to get over 100 catches to get. You said 90 catches, you will have two racks, bro. So, think about that. You will have Marlon, to get over 100 catches Marlon, to get over two racks, bro. Marlon. Go ahead. Up, on 53 catches, I put up 1,100. I put yeah. up 1,100 yards on 53 catches. Now add in a whole nother, now add in another 40, add in Seven. another 38 catches. Okay, you'll be somewhere around close to about maybe 50, 50, so, guess what? so that means that, so also maybe. what that means that my yardage, my yardage, my yardage per catch would have been, would have been longer because again, before my last game of the season, I was averaging 27 yards a catch. So my so average saying, drop. So so your average. Me. So you saying your average drop at the end? Because I'm all I'm trying to say is you over here being a statistician, bro. I'm just telling you the math no, don't I, math. The math got a math for you to say that. The math is going. And, the math is going to now. The math is going to math. Now, but if yeah. you were averaging 27 yards a, a pop on 90 some catches, that's 2,000 yards receiving, bro. That's all I'm trying to tell you. If you averaging 21. On ninety catches, that's not two bands. That's just not. That's but you got to think. See what your what your mindset is, and what your what how you're thinking of it. You're thinking as if I'm running hitches. I ain't running hitches. As you know, so you saying your numbers would have went up. Yes, I'm. So you going up top with it? What we talking about? I'm stretching her out, (laughs) niggas. You say I'm stretching her out. Two o five in the building. I'm stretching her out. That's what it is. Oh, this dude is comedy, man. Hey, man. Like I said, there's no I, way that you're gonna. And, and and my and my take on it is this: it goes back to like this. Who the fuck was stopping me? Well, nobody hey, stopping man. me. That's every. That's that's every receiver saying that, bro. Every receiver nah. say who's stopping them. Fast. You know, I can't think of it. Hey man, I'm just saying, bro. If if you was doing that, you would hit 2,000, 27 yards a pop. But if you go back to 21 yards a pop, bro, that ain't the math. Unless you unless your numbers will increase as as you will get more catches, bro. That's all I'm saying, bro. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you can do the math, Marco. That shit is math is math, bro. <laughs> math is math. You know what I'm saying? But if your numbers go up six yards a pop, bro, then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 90 some catches. He for sure gonna hit two bands right bro, at 2,000. Like I said, if I had, if I, if I was getting 91, if I was getting 90 some catches, if I was getting catches, bro, I'm putting up two bands. Okay. Right. Right. Like that. All right, yeah, hey man, is. hey man. I, I hope your son got the same mentality as you, bro. That's real. that's all I gotta say. <laughs> that's real. I just, I just, I just want him to do that. You know, a lot of these dudes don't have killer instincts like that, man. We used to all used to think like that. That's crazy, bro. I used to say the same shit. Nobody could catch on me, bro. Nobody can do this on me. So, hey, oh, man. but that's the thing. That's but that's that's the difference is that 
I, I truly believe that, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to show it to you. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, Deuce, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to run, and I'm still going to catch the ball. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's that mindset. That's that mindset. He think he Randy. He said, "I'm Randy Moss. I'm going up top. Throw it to me." Hey man, hey, you remember when I first got there? How we used to do uh, one on ones and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, hey, Deuce, uh, freshman, bro. I be over there. Hey, bro. I was like, this nigga Marco trash. Cause I said, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, line him up, bro. Hey man, hey, hey Marco, bro, you. you how many catches did you catch on me, bro? I, I don't remember you going nine Mar- out of ten, bro. Come on, bro. How many catches did you have on Mar- me, bro? I don't like respectfully, like you probably you didn't stop me from catching, you never stopped me from catching one ball. Marco, you didn't <laughs> catch one ball. <laughs> Marco, I only remember one fade route you caught on me, bro. What out of the not, whole time? What now one what? ball? Like I said, you was a safety for a reason. Nah, I moved out of corner sometimes, and I was in a nickel. So yeah, now again, you was a safety for a reason. I you, you you come you come out down that island where I'm, it's a whole nother ball game. Nah, I don't remember that. <laughs> you know what though? I'll say this though. I'll say this, Marco on a fade route. That's probably your best Hold route, on. bro. That was your best route. But uh, you know who actually had wiggle, and I don't know if he. Uh, he, he, I feel like he never got the love that he should have got was Dwayne Sanders because that nigga was a hard ass nigga to call it guard one on one. Shit, him, yeah, Dwayne, yeah, Dwayne was Dwayne was fire, yeah. you know. It was just, I, I don't again, I, I don't, I don't again. I think what, what tend to happen is that, and one of the biggest issues that I was seeing that we were doing at Nevada is that we didn't know how to. We didn't know how to utilize our players. Like, like just to be, be serious with you, that I don't think that, like, Nevada were probably looking at it and, and Coach Alton was just looking at it like, okay, well, we got a bunch of two, three-star type of guys, and they, like, they just thought that we were just, just all right players. But didn't understand that. But they didn't they – didn't, they, they wasn't used to having a talented group that they had and being able to put people in position and take the program higher than where it is that it should have been. My my personal opinion is that I always felt that off that there's no way that we should never not have been in a, in contentions of fucking around and being part of the, um, the New Year's Day Bowl. I didn't think I didn't think that I felt that our program should have been up there with the Boise State and everybody talking about kind of like it was that year that you guys went and won the um you know, cap last year, you know, when you guys beat Boise State and 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 everything like like that should have been the battle standard from the jump. Right. Bro, right. if you really sit there and you think about it, like again, it started with my class. With me, Cap, um, Kevin Basket, Dante Moat. Oh, KB. Josh Lager, KB I, Sloan, I, like, wrong. Like, like, you know, Chris Wellington, Brandon Frager, Vital, like everybody that was part of that class, like, bro, our program should have been phenomenal. But again, right. we didn't know how to utilize and use what we had. No, nah, I mean, there, there were some killers on that, that squad, bro. I, I think that year uh, when I was there with y'all, it was crazy because we had this identity of just running the ball every down and the defense I mean that shit was so trash bro the defense scheme I don't I don't even want to talk about the scheme right there me and Zig already talked about that shit yeah. 119th in the nation bro that was sick that yeah. was sick that was sick bro I ain't but, gonna even lie to you and, and that and that's and that's what I'm saying so it's like you know you have these you have these young these young hungry bull guys that are coming on and also that that basically keeping that momentum of what it is that we already building that we already having going. I mean, because shit, that's how the Alabamas become the Alabama. That's how the SCs become the SCs. But again, our mentality was that, you know what, we're just going to put these people in these positions and we're just going to just put it there. Just like with Dante. Think about this, bro. Dante was a cornerback. A safety. He was a safety. Dante was a cornerback. No, he was a cornerback. 
<laughs> he was a, he was a cornerback. Then they moved him to safety. Then they moved him to linebacker, and then they moved him to defensive end. So again, imagine their followers. Again, he had a he had a he had a hell of a career though. Yeah. So it's like it it, it take it took it took all those different things, like all those different things, to sit up there in order to find out and fi- finally put him somewhere where it is that that he would that he needed to be. Bro. You know, I'll so I keep it one hundred with you. Dante was a hell of a DN, bro. DN slash outside linebacker, bro. If, and that's why I have to say he's part of my top five of all time. That nigga was a freaking nature, bro. Yes, easily. The, easily. The dude ran a the dude ran a four two forty. He was the first dude I ever seen blaze like that, bro. He blazed like that, bro. And he was constantly hitting four threes at Nevada. Easy, bro. And I looked at that dude like shit, bro. Who in the world birthed your ass? Because that's some fucking shit that ain't even made yet. That was crazy, bro. And uh, at that time, I would say this. We had coaches at Nevada who knew how to use player strength. And I was talking to Zig about this on a other podcast. We were the first ones that stood d Moke up, and then you start seeing it everywhere. See, d Moke was a DN, and, you know, traditionally, you either on the line or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Coach Boo was like, nah, we're going to stand you up and we're going to put you over that weakest dude and you just do you. We're going to let you attack the fish every play, bro. And so he did that every game. He used to be like, all right, this is our uh, – I forgot the name of the package, bro, but it was a package where him and then we had JMJ, b Marsh still on the field, and then we'll take everybody else off and then we'll just – let it go. Let it rip. Let it, I mean, yeah. yeah. But see, at that time, I will say this, though. You know, a lot of coaches in that old school mindset, they have a scheme. You got to play to their scheme, right? But nowadays, you see coaches actually playing to the player's ability. And that's a huge difference in, like, today's game versus, I guess, our generation, right? Yeah, but – but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, and I'm and I'm gonna say something that you know. Again, I know a lot of people don't even know this, but um, it's like this. It's like again, and this this goes back to what I was talking about when we using the talent that we have. Right. Like, bro, we was bro, we try to move cap to safety. Okay. Yeah, I remember we that. Move, we try to move cap to safety. And and, and and just being and just being honest, what it is that Cat was doing, Cat was doing that from the jump. But again, yeah. it didn't fit their scheme because of what it is that they were used to. We were used to having the the type of quarterback we were used to having the Jeff Rowe. We were used to having the Nick Graziano. Not saying yeah. that they, they, they was a phenomenal coach. That was phenomenal quarterbacks, but they were also a little bit different. Right. Well, Graz was Graz was nice. Gras, yeah, Gras, Gras was nice, Gras bro. Was Gras was nice. Yeah, he was nice. But, he was but, how nice. To, but how the pistol offense, but, but how the pistol offense was set up before the read option to be able to run and do and, and do these the, um to trick the defense, he wasn't he wasn't effective that well with that. But could he could he could he drop could he throw a ball and, and drop it on the dime? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, he could have. That's what he was doing. That was that was his strength. But it was just yeah. one of it, it was those things of me just even going back to the saying is that like I would talk about if Nick Graziano didn't get hurt, Cat wouldn't been at Nevada no more. Dang, uh, we 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 might have to that hey that might have to be like the intro to this segment <laughs> <laughs> for real, yeah. Hey man, Marco, bro, man. Hey, it's been a pleasure having you man, on here, man. Appreciate you, man. Cause you, uh, you spending some game, bro. And I mean, I just listening to you, bro, about your top five, bro, and in your argument, bro. You got some valid points. So, I mean, shout out to Rashad, Rashad. It is what it is, bro. Y'all both, y'all to me, y'all both in my top five receivers of all time. So I can't sit here and talk about the the old school guys and this and that. Cause yeah. I, I I I seen the stuff that they did. They it's Nevada's very traditional, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna go off of what I seen. And Nate Burleson, I do think he number one. And then I got other cats that 
you know, I'm going to even throw my boy Hollywood out there. Y'all don't even know who Hollywood is, but that's the homie Wim. I got to give him his props, bro. He took somebody's yeah, scholarly away. Wim took somebody's scholarly away, bro. And we'll talk about that when Wim get on, because, you know, shout out to the homie Wim. He an yeah. L.A. dude. But, yeah, man, this shit is another classic, bro. Marco, yeah, no. what you got to leave us with, bro? <laughs> Oh, no, what I'm just going to say with that. Um, but again, man, it's, you know, don't, everybody, again, the, the receivers that came through Nevada has been been phenomenal. You know, even from, you know, the young cats of, you know, the Romeo Dobbs. Um, again, B. Wim, like, like those guys did what they did. Like those guys, in my opinion, like, again, they're, they're, they're great. And, and again, you got to, and they all are listed within that top ten. Yeah. You know, um, and again, I respect and I respect everybody game. I respect each and every last one of those guys, you know, because those who have paved the way for me, also I paved the way for other people as well, too. And, yeah. and again, just to see these guys going out here and eat and going out here and do their thing, like, man, you gotta tilt your hat off to them. Right, right. Because again, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not, it's not easy. Um, and again, it, it, it's it's hard work. You know, because of everything that comes with it, you know, and and that's one of the biggest things that I tell my son It's like, you know, like, bro, ain't none of this stuff going to be easy for you. Ain't nobody mm-hmm. going to give you that. Right. right. You know, you got to go out here and take what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, bro. Well, shit, man. Deuce, what you got, man? Man, I just want to say thank you for getting on the podcast, man. You spin that fire and man. Much success of everything that you got going on, brother. I appreciate you, man. All right, bro. I, hey, I appreciate that as well, too. But before I get up off here, then also I can get here now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my shotgun. Um, <laughs> yeah, make sure, hey, make sure when you get my son on his on his channel, and yeah. my son, who I'm talking about, is um, B Wim Hollywood. Get my son on here. Who wanted to be just like me? Get my son on here so we can talk. That boy is my son. He's my son. So you can let him know. And what you need to do, Marla, you need to you need to record this and send him a video and show him that I've said that that's my son right there. We're gonna post this one. We're gonna post this one up. This is gonna be the first one. It doesn't matter. That's my son. It doesn't doesn't matter. matter. (laughs) That's it. Hey, it doesn't it. matter. We gonna end it on that. We gonna end it on that. Hey, deuces, <laughs> y'all, deuces. <laughs>